mention should, be, should therefore be made of two recent events. The, organize, the reorganization of the Museo del Risorgimento of Turin and the exhibition held at the Officina Grandi Riparazioni, the Great Train Repair Depot in Turin. Both events, from different points of view, certainly set value on the experience of the Risorgimento National Unification. They invite reconsideration of long-run issues, but they do so in different ways. And to be noted in both cases is an attitude absolutely contrary to emphasizing that character of Italians which seems indissolubly linked with self-deprecation, absences, the paradigm of decadence, and the numerous lacks that have characterized Italian history, making it intrinsically weak and full of missed opportunities. Discourse on the character of the Italians adduce a history made of absences, Protestant reform, for a long time the nation state, an intellectual class strongly rooted in the nation, a bourgeoisie aware of its, its responsibility. A history uh, made also of presences, the counter-reformist Catholic Church all of, and a series of others, all of them harmful for the faith of the nation. Only one feature uh, was marked in, uh, as marked uh, this representation of the Italian character linking uh, and absolving Italians uh, from uh, linking the fascism to the republic and uh, realizing a sort of self-absolution by Italians in the transition from fascism to the republic. The idea of the Italians brava gente, good people, uh, which can absolve themselves of every uh, historical responsibility. In different ways, the two Turin exhibitions celebrate an Italy in progress, as Gioacchino Volpe put it. The Museo del Risorgimento presents an Italian history embedded in the European long 19th century. Th thus, the Risorgimento does not begin with the dynasty, as happened under fascism, but rather with the Jacobin Republic. Uh, and it was constantly open to Europe, to the Europe of 48 and that of the 1870. And Hungary and Slovakia, as well as France, United Kingdom, Germany and Spain, was cited to suggest a European reading of the events which led up to the Risorgimento. Further developments of the museum will go beyond the brief but significant videos and beyond the museum guide printed for the occasion to furnish a deeper and certainly more nuanced interpretation. The museum's declared strategy is to operate at several levels, thereby adopting an approach which gathers to different audiences, an approach which strikes me as successful. The museums end with the First World War and not as previously with the resistance and as, as a second risorgimento in construction of the Italian myth of the second post-war uh, period. Different considerations apply to the exhibitions at the Officina Grandi Riparazioni in Turin, an exhibition mounted in an enormous space of industrial archaeology and consisting of thematic exhibits, objects, painting, multimedia panels with striking effects. The exhibit fascinate children as they move their, hand, their hands across the blackboard to see photographs of school classes and the different realities of literacy in Italy. And the public was intrigued and amused by novel and surprising spaces. At the Officina, however, the Risorgimento, a phenomenon by now generally read as a part of European dynamic, begins in Italy in 1815. Thus, one reads in the catalog, the chronological order starts from the consideration that it was Carlo Alberto, the king of Piemont, who launched the national movement. This is a decidedly outmodeled view, even if the text of the catalog states that obviously not ignored uh, are the beginnings of a European romantic cult culture, not 
nor the insurrectionary ferment inspired by the French Revolution. It must be said that public attendance at these two exhibitions for their inauguration and immediately afterwards has been exceptional. In the case of the Museo del Risorgimento, 2,700 ticket, tickets were requested for the day of public inauguration and 53,000 bookings were made while the museum was still closed. And therefore, even before the effects of the speech by the president with, uh, who inaugurated uh, the museum uh, in the day of the centennial. Let me now come to conclusions. With reference to history museums outside Europe, I have pointed out how museums of history can be places for active encounter, dialogue, negotiation, and discussion, even on traumatic episodes of the past. They do not necessarily have to produce a single master narrative. They can instead propose models for conciliation based on the recognition of differences. This means creating space not only for antagonism and conflicts, but also for the different communities that have lived in the national territories for many centuries, or which have become part of countries' life in recent years. Yet, it makes no sense to produce and dadly, to simply produce and dad elements that flank each other as separate entities. The recent literature invites us to problematize a pillar model of cultural heritage where communities are set apart without communication and which opposes diverse reality, realities. It instead proposes that the museum should not hide memories of conflict but should be careful to analyze them and create a cultural dialogue that allows both, both historical and cultural perspe perspective but focusing on encounters and cross-fertilization interactions, moving out from a rigid monolithic national identity in favor of a more complex approach and towards a positive evaluation of hybridity. The complexity of these representations in relation to diverse historical contexts is I believe a good reason for preferring networks of museums rather than one single museum. Colonial history must evidently occupy a center place in the history museum of today, but also immigration for the com from the former colonies or elsewhere must be a matter for profound reflection using the tools of anthropology and the memory, but also uh, accepting a long period historical approach. It is a theme on which the Italian museums certainly still lag well behind. Still, there is a lot to do in order to allow museums to deconstruct rather than construct national myths. The most recent case of the Ty Tyrol Panorama Museum located in Innsbruck, opened two weeks ago, prompts further reflections. This museum seems not only to celebrate the victory against the French troops, but also to promote a strong Ty Tyrol, Tyrol, I don't know how one says in English, identity against the European one, let alone a sort of ethno-nationalism once more based both on war and resistance and on nature. Thus, the Boden comes together with the Blut once again, stressing the specificity and the attachment of Tyrol to its tradition. 